Welcome to our family education video program. Over the next 10 minutes or so, we will be discussing vascular malformations. This video is a general overview of the topic and is intended to provide you with a general understanding. Your doctor will discuss with you the details of your child's particular case. First, we want to help you understand what vascular malformations are. It's important to keep in mind that there's not one type of malformation, but rather many types that can be found in different parts of the body. They involve many blood vessels, including arteries, capillaries, and veins. Treatment can take place over a period of time, ranging from one single treatment to multiple treatments over months or years. Vascular malformations can affect both boys and girls in ages from the newborn to young adults. The cause of these malformations is not known. Most are present from birth, with some diagnosed early, others later in childhood, and the rest may be diagnosed in the teenage years or even later. As you know, the heart pumps blood throughout the body, bringing with it the oxygen and nutrients the body needs to thrive. Sometimes the blood does not flow as it should. Vascular malformations interfere with the normal flow of blood, particularly through arteries, veins, and capillaries. There may be a tangle of veins or arteries that create a malformation resembling a bunch of grape stems or a tangled web of small blood vessels. Visible malformations appear on the skin as a prominent vein or a purple discoloration, but most vascular malformations cannot be seen. Next, let's take a look at the types and names of the different malformations. Some of the terms used to describe specific irregularities are arteriovenous malformations, AVMs, which usually involve arteries and veins, venous vascular malformations, VVMs, which usually involve veins, Vein of Gallen malformation, VGM, is a specific malformation affecting the vein of Gallen which is located in the middle of the brain. Capillary vascular malformations, which involve the smallest blood vessels, the capillaries. An aneurysm, which is an abnormal bulging outward of an artery's wall. A fistula. A fistula means an abnormal connection, in this case, between blood vessels. These distinctions are important because it's the type of malformation that determines the treatment approach. Not every patient will have symptoms from the malformation. Those who have symptoms may experience one or more of the following. Heart failure, a failure to thrive such as difficulty with feeding and poor weight gain, discolorization at the site such as a reddish, purplish, or bluish look to the skin, bleeding or drainage at the site, a feeling of pulsation or throbbing at the site, increased head growth and seizures or change in level of alertness. When malformations become apparent because of a sudden event such as bleeding, loss of consciousness, seizures and headaches, immediate medical attention is required. These patients are usually admitted to the intensive care unit of a hospital and the testing to make the diagnosis begins quickly. Other times the malformation is noticed or a throbbing is felt at the site. In these cases, the testing while necessary is not urgent and can be taken care of on an outpatient basis. Let's review the diagnostic phase and the testing that takes place. Patients are usually first seen by their primary doctor who conducts a clinical examination. If your doctor suspects a vascular malformation, referrals are made for diagnostic tests and a consultation with one or more specialists. Doctors who specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of these malformations include a neurologist, a neurosurgeon, a neuroradiologist, a head and neck specialist, and a plastic surgeon. To determine the type, location, and size of the malformation, various tests may be needed. One diagnostic test is the MRI scan. MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. It uses magnetic fields to create the pictures. There is one special technique that allows the MRI to create a picture that shows the blood vessels in a particular area. This is called an MRA, or Magnetic Resonance Angiography. The MRI and MRA tests are low-risk diagnostic tests. There is no pain associated with an MRI. However, it does require lying on a table that slides into a long tube. 
The MRI machine also makes a loud knocking noise when generating the pictures. This is what the machine sounds like when taking the scans. If patients have a fear of closed-in spaces, they may require medication or anesthesia to lie still for the procedure. While the MRI, MRA, is usually the first diagnostic test performed to confirm the presence of a vascular malformation, a diagnostic test called an angiogram may also be recommended. An angiogram is a special x-ray procedure that evaluates the blood flow through the arteries and veins. During the angiography procedure, a very thin, flexible tube called a catheter is inserted into an artery, usually near the patient's groin, or another place depending on which site offers the best access. The catheter is threaded through the blood vessels and a dye is injected to better observe the circulation in the affected area. This is visualized under fluoroscopy, which is a low-dose x-ray. Angiography is used as a test to create pictures called angiograms to learn what problems may be present. And other times, angiography is used during a treatment because the pictures can be used as a guide, a sort of road map. Let's take a look at what happens during the angiogram. When you arrive at the hospital with your child, enter the main lobby and take the elevator to the fourth floor. Here you will complete the admitting process for your child. Remember, this is the same process if your child is having only an angiography diagnostic test or the angiogram with the embolization procedure. We'll explain what embolization means a little later in this video. When you step off the elevator, look for the signs on the wall that point to the Center for Endovascular Surgery. Follow the signs until you arrive at the reception desk. Here you will complete any needed paperwork and finish the admitting procedure. Most likely, you will have a short wait. Soon after, a nurse will escort you and your child to the nursing station in the patient care area. A nurse will conduct a nursing assessment of your child and review the procedures with you. Your child will be asked to change into hospital pajamas. Then, depending on the scheduled test or procedure, a doctor will talk with you about what will happen during the procedure or test. Then, a medical staff member will conduct a medical assessment and review the consent forms. Next, your child will be escorted to the procedure room. One parent may stay with the child during this time up until the child goes to sleep. There is a waiting area outside for parents while the test or procedure is completed. After the angiography procedure is completed, the child will be moved to the pediatric intensive care unit to be watched for a period of time. Discharge from the hospital usually takes place the next morning. Once the diagnostic pictures are created and the scans completed, our multidisciplinary team will review them and discuss the best course of action. During these meetings, a number of doctors representing various areas of medicine gather to share their recommendations. From these meetings, the best plan is decided upon and developed for each patient. Your doctor will then meet with you to discuss this plan and your child's case in detail, including the risks and benefits of treatment. This meeting is a good time for you to ask any questions you might have. Write them down as you think of them so you can review them when you meet with the medical staff. 